that it's always 420 somewhere. <laughs> Holy subatomic physics, Batman! But how can both of these statements be true at the same time? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if this issue is bothering you, I want you to pay very close attention you want to, come to the road scholar of the okay. Manalis tribe, <laughs> Big Steve Parrish. You know, tonight, being 420, this is a very sacred night to us here, I hope, because for many years that I worked for the Grateful Dead, the one thing we knew was that marijuana, which was the slave name of that cannabis plant, was actually represented total freedom, and it always will represent that. And so, in our world, we never called it 420. Way, it's a, people saying that we started that is, a, is very wrong, because our thing was 10 to 6. And that was something that Sylvester started. When he, he worked at the post office, him and Bobby Peterson would get high every day at 10 to 6. And they, their thing was, it's always a, uh, at 10 to 6, they're always in the land of Zombie. And so we set all our cards, and we had jalopies, we always set the clocks to 10 to 6. It wasn't until years later, when we had Crunch Street in San Rafael, that the kids from San Rafael High started the 420. And that thing took on, and we got credit for it, but what the hell, because we thought we the whole world was as stone as we were. So I want to tell you, uh, with marijuana, when we were taking it around the country, it was highly illegal. Oh and my God. Terry, he loved to smoke pot. He really loved pot. He didn't he like seeding pot. He did, wasn't too happy when Sensomia came along. And in those days, we had a very colorful bunch of people that brought all kinds of great weed. There was Teddy Bear, there was um, Ken Cottle, known as Goldfinger, and there was Howie Wowie. Now Howie Wowie was way before Maui Wowie. And he would be really mad at me right now that I'm even talking about him in public. His real name was Howie Wales. And he, in those days, brought the best Mexican weed that you could ever imagine. The Michoacan, the Acapulco, the all, every city in Mexico, grown by wonderful Indians that lived up in the hills. And in the Grateful Dead, once you started working for them, all of a sudden you realized what we rolled in the rest of the world was considered a pinner, and you were going to start rolling bombers. And Owsley insisted that when we rolled a joint, it looked exactly like a cigarette. So you would get a Rizla rolling machine and Sean DeClair papers. Sean and Claire papers were the thinnest, most beautiful papers you could get in the 60s and 70s. And they were made in Canada. And we would covet when we get boxes of them, we'd get cases of them, and really hold on to them because we would use these rolling machines because we had to go smoke them all over the world in America where people didn't want you smoking weed. I don't know why. And so Phil, he really loved to smoke pot. He just didn't like ever buying pot. So he always hung around with crew guys and smoked with us. Now Jerry would always buy some weed. He'd buy a pound of weed and then give everybody some. And we used to do a thing. You knew you made it on the Grateful Dead crew when you got a mailbox at the office that your check was in. And once a month, we would all put all our money together and buy a pound of weed from Howard. And then Grandma would get all these little funny colored bags, green and yellow sandwich bags and blue ones, and he put everybody's stash in there. He was very good at dividing up the stuff. And I've got to tell you a story that happened to me and him when we were over in Europe the first time. Because we, no way, were going to Europe without our marijuana. So we cleaned up about two pounds of pot of Howard Reynolds' weed. And then the whole crew we cleaned it up and we took one amp apart and we stuffed all the weed in there, right? Yeah. And when we got to England, these two customs guys made us unload the whole truck. What? 
and me and Sparky were there, and for some reason, they looked at this one case, the one case that we had a pocket. in. And they said, open that up. We opened it up. But they, that's all, and they put it away. And that was it. We never said a word about it. Of all the cases to pick, I worked 75 times. So a few days later, we broke it open, and we all just distributed the weed. And in Europe, it was all hash and splits and tobacco. And we didn't like that. So, do any of you know of the Louvre Museum, where they got the Mona Lisa? Yeah. So, Ray Rod and I are in there, and we're down there, and we're, the, at this time, this is 1972, and the Louvre was set up, so there weren't a lot of guards around, and there was the Mona Lisa sitting there at the end of the aisle, and we're looking at it, and we said, God, it's a lot smaller than we thought, you know? And then we look out, and right next to the Mona Lisa, right about here where Roger's standing, there was what you call French doors, French window doors, big ones. And there was a little balcony. So we said, let's smoke a joint. So we opened the windows, right? Swing them open. And we're leaning out there, passing this joint back and forth, right? All of a sudden, every guard in the place comes running over to us. They go, my God, the Mona Lisa, no, fresh air. You came up fresh air. And they're screaming and yelling at us. And they didn't even care. He says, don't call us stupid, I said to him. In America, that would be law, man. <laughs> and so, the next day, and so in Europe, you know, we were yeah, stupid Roger. American kids. We all bought switch legs, right? So the next day, we were playing at the Olympic Theater in Paris. And I was sitting there early in the afternoon. We had set up. We were taking our little break like we did in America. And I'm sitting right on the stage here. And I light up this big fat joint, I'm smoking it, and I'm throwing this knife in the stage, right? And I throw it down there, and then I see the shiny shoes standing there. Ooh. And I start going up, and there's a stripe on the pants. And the machine gun. The French police come to rock shows with machine guns. They're very smart. <laughs> and, uh, so he said to me, Monsieur, Monsieur, your cigarette, your cigarette? No, 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 you cannot smoke here. Didn't care about the switchblade. Didn't care about the cigarette being marijuana. Why? I tell you, we found out that you're way ahead of us on weed and hats. But anyway, is everybody ready to listen to some music now?